Yeah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, sir. I just want to say that I'm glad to be here. So glad. So glad. So glad. Brother Evans started out this morning. I'm still here. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. I brought there for a while. But God told me, He said, I didn't bring you from California to here. Uh huh. For you to go. Go. So I'm still here. Yeah, to my enemies, I'm still here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To my loved ones, I'm still here. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going nowhere anytime soon. Yeah. Yeah. Keep on I'm going to do what God has me to do. Say so, right. And I'm right. thankful that I'm able to stand here Amen. to do that. Right. Amen. I'm not 100% yet, but I'm getting there. All yeah. right. Yeah. All right. If you're able That's to all stand, right. please uh -huh. stand. Our scripture is going to come from Matthew's, mm -hmm. the ninth chapter, yeah. verses 20 to 22. Amen. Matthew, the ninth chapter, mm -hmm. verses 20 to 22. All right. Is everyone there? Amen. 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 And suddenly... A woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. Yeah. For she said to herself, if I only may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around and when he saw her, he said, be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I have the Father. Yeah. Thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here. Uh -huh. Father, I ask that you put me behind and let the Holy Spirit come yeah. before yeah. me and deliver this message that somebody might be saved. Yeah. Somebody might take it out and share it with somebody else that needs to be with us to stand by us. Bless the word, Father. Bless we Lord. ask it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 My subject today, and it kind of fit in with what Colette was saying. Amen. Amen. If Jesus can't fix it, nobody can. Nobody. Amen. All right. All right. If Jesus can't fix it, That's right. nobody can. If you have ever been to the doctor, then you have seen him make notes in your folder. He's making a record of your symptoms, your diagnosis, and your treatment so that he or any other physician might be able to see what treatment you have already had. A good doctor will keep a case file on every single person he treats in his practice. These files are supposed to be kept confidential and secret. The doctor isn't supposed to talk about you or your condition with anyone else. All right. Without <clears throat> doubt, about without doubt, there are some interesting things in a doctor's file. I am sure that most doctors encounter many strange cases as they treat people day by day. Amen. But today, I want to open the case file of a physician. Yeah. Who kept good and accurate records. Right. of the cases he treated. However, he does not hide the facts surrounding any of his cases from the view of anybody. In fact, he has the written records of his cases in the most popular book of all time. All right, I'm talking about the Bible. All right. All right, During the course of his ministry, Jesus encountered many strange cases. He was able to overcome them all by his power, and because he is God. Uh -huh. One of the strangest cases is recorded for us in the verses we have already read. Yeah. In this case, Jesus, the great physician, doesn't touch the patient. 
He doesn't prescribe any medicine. Hello. He doesn't even make a diagnosis. But his patient is cured nonetheless. Amen. This morning, I want to spend just a little bit of time looking at a few events from the life of Christ that showcase the power of his touch. Uh -huh. I want to show you that he can do for you if you do not know him. Uh -huh. I want to show you that there is power in the touch of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. These verses tell a tale of a sick, burdened woman who is healed by the power of Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. She paints a picture of us of what happens when any sick individual meets the great physician. Uh -huh. So let us take time this morning to look at the strange case of this woman. If Jesus can't fix it, uh -huh. nobody can. Nobody can. We're going to talk about three areas. First is going to be the condition of her health. Yeah. The second is going to be the circumstances of her healing. Okay. And the last is going to be the compassion of her healing. Okay. And I want to talk about a few other cases that my Lord Jesus Christ touched. Yeah. The diagnosis. The Bible said that she had an issue of blood. This meant that she was hemorrhaging someplace in her body. All right. Mm -hmm. Whatever the source of her bleeding was, it was a condition that literally ruined her life. Uh -huh. mm. Under the law, this woman was to be considered unclean. Uh -huh. Yeah. Anything or anyone that she touched was also considered unclean. As a result, she could not mingle with people in public, lest she cause them to be defiled. Mm -hmm. She could not go to the women's court of the temple because she was unclean. Uh -huh. She could not be married because she would be defiled. She would defile her husband. All right. If she had ever been married, her husband would have been forced to divorce her. She could not work around others because of the danger of defilement. This reduced her life to a life of begging scraps of food yeah. from a distance. Her condition left her on the fringe of society. Uh -huh. All right, man. She had been plagued with this condition for 12 long years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Given the lifespan of the average person in that day, her condition had probably began just after puberty. Yeah. Therefore, for most of all her adult life, yeah. she had been in this sad, sad shape. Mm -hmm. We are told that she had tried all the remedies of the physicians of her day. Yeah. We are told that she suffered under their care. And what the <clears throat> excuse me. But of this take of the Persian Union nine laws, boards, she was told to take the Persian onions, I'm sorry, nine laws, boil them in the wine and give it to her to drink every day. Uh -huh. And from that, she was supposed to be all right. Yeah. But that failed. Mm -hmm. Set her in a place where two ways meet. Let her hold a cup of wine in her hand and let somebody come behind and off-right her and say, arise from that flux. But should this do no good, take a handful of cumin and a handful of carcass and a handful of facial grease. Let these be boiled and given to her to drink and say, arise from thy flux. Yeah. But should this also fail, dig seven trenches and burn in them some cuttings of vines not yet circumcised and let her take in her hand a cup of wine and let her be led from this trench and set down over there and let her be, be removed from there and set her in another area for removal and, re and say to her, arise from that flux. All right. So she was given some things to do uh -huh. to help her condition. 
Now I'm looking at this as everything that she had, she did have some wine. Yeah. <laughs> Whether it was helping her or not, she did have some wine to drink with everything that she took. Yeah. And if that didn't do it, the wine should have gotten drunk. <laughs> or made her feel good. Yeah. But it still was not helping her case. All right, all right. She spent all of her money seeking a cure. And had nothing left even to sustain her meager existence. Despite all of her efforts and those of her doctors, her condition just continued to deteriorate. For all practical purposes, she was headed for death. Her life was literally draining out of her body. This woman paints a clear picture of every person who does not know Jesus Christ. All right. You see, the lost person is also defiled by blood disease. Mm -hmm. He inherited this disease from Adam. Amen. This is a condition that has plagued the lost person since he or she entered this world. It is a condition that made no better despite all the efforts of the sinner. You see, many lost people spend their youth and even their entire lives searching for meaning and help for their condition. But instead of getting better, they only get worse. They only get harder in their hearts and more deeply rooted in their sin. Amen. All the efforts at self-improvement and religion will not help your condition. This poor woman was in a sad shape. But she wasn't even close to being as bad off as that person who is not saved by grace. Uh -huh. She was headed for the grave, and they are headed to hell. Uh -huh. The woman had heard of Jesus somewhere. Amen. I wonder who told her. Perhaps it was someone else who had been healed by touching his garment. Uh -huh. However, it happened. Yeah. Somewhere she had heard about this man named Jesus. Yeah. Amen. She believed that merely touching his garment yeah. would make all the difference for her. Yeah. Yeah. Contrast with her faith with, the, with Jairus, he believed that Jesus could come and heal his daughter by his touch. Yeah. Yeah. This woman believed that if she would be healed by just touching him, yeah. Both exhibited great faith. Yeah. Hers was a bit, bit deeper. She demonstrated great courage by approaching Jesus in that crowd. Yeah. Yeah. As she elbowed her way through the people, she was causing ceremony, ceremonial defilement for everyone she touched. But she was taking a great risk. Yeah. For if she had been recognized, she would have been subject to public humiliation mm -hmm. and ridicule and possible retribution. Mm -hmm. A crowd like that might have gotten worked up and stoned her to death. Mm -hmm. For her, it was a risk worth taking. Yeah. She knew what Jesus would do for her uh -huh. if she could just get to him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. we have to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know that everything else we've tried doesn't work. Uh -huh. okay. Doctors, friends, yeah. but if we can just get to Jesus, yeah. Yeah. he'll make everything all right. Yeah. 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 As I was telling somebody this past week, he may not come when you want him, yeah. but he's the own time, God. Yeah. 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 He works in his own time, yeah. Yeah. not yours, yeah. not mine, yeah. his own time. Yeah. And when he's ready to do a healing, yeah. And to make things plain and all right, oh, yeah. he's going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. All we have to do is trust him. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Hello. Just as this woman touched the hem of his garment uh -huh. and was instantly healed, yeah. all those who come to him in faith find healing for their souls. Yeah. The process usually begins when a sinner hears about Jesus. Perhaps they hear about him from someone who has been saved by grace. Amen. Perhaps they witness the transformation in the lives around them. 
it was easy to see that the look of faith had been accomplished. Perhaps they read the message in the word of God. However, it occurred that they heard of one who could heal the disease of their soul and give them a new life. Once the facts have been heard and understood, then faith is activated. Faith that instinctively knows that it, it can get to Jesus. Amen. He will make all the difference. Oh, this faith is joined by the courage to get to him. Once faith had determined to get to Jesus, nothing can stop it short of reaching its goal. Amen. Nothing, not the ridicule of sinners, not the demands of the Savior, not the power of sin can stop the one who is determined to get to Jesus Christ. Amen. When that faith touches him, a miracle takes place. The sinner is instantly and completely delivered from his sin, his past and his punishment. Something powerful happens at that moment, and the sinner becomes a heaven-born child of God. Yeah. See, when Jesus touched you, you're born again. Yes, you are. Mm -hmm. You have to believe in him. Yeah. You have to trust him yeah. to know that everything is going to be all right. Exactly. And exactly. trust me, I'm a living witness. Yeah. He'll make things all right. Yeah. Yeah. You have to go through something sometimes yeah. for God to show you to others yeah. that if you trust him, yeah. he's going to make everything all right. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to feel pain. Oh, yeah. You're going to feel sickness. Yeah. You're going to feel sorrow. Uh -huh. But if you trust in that man called Jesus, yeah. uh -huh. he's going to make everything all right. Yeah. You just got to trust him. Yeah. What brings this to pass? Two things. Grace and faith. Uh -huh. As this woman walked through the years of suffering, every step she took was along a path of grace that was leading her steadily closer to her encounter with Jesus Christ. So every step that she was taking, yeah. it was leading her to Jesus. Yeah. She didn't know that. Nobody else didn't know that. Jesus knew that. Yeah. That she was coming to him. We got to believe that we can do that too. Yes, sir. We can go to him and yeah. tell him all about it. Oh, Tell yeah. them all our trouble. Yeah. Tell them all our sorrow. Yeah. He'll make it all right. Yes, he will. As we travel the pathway of life, we are brought into contact with Jesus through the grace of God. When we are at that crossroad, the simple exercise of faith in him brings salvation to the lost soul. Some of you are at the crossroads today. Now is the time to exercise faith in him so you can be saved from the disease of sin that is slowly killing you and dragging you to hell. Yeah. As soon as this woman touches him, Jesus knows what has happened. Just for the record, he knew about it before it even happened. Yes. But he knows that virtue has gone out of him. This is a word that means power. Yeah, yeah. We get our modern words dynamite and dynamic from it. Yeah. Jesus knows what has happened. And he asked the question, who touched my clothes? Yeah. I know. I know. Of course, there were dozens of people touching him and bumping into him that day. All right. A fact pointed out by one of his disciples. Uh -huh. But her touch was different. Yeah. It was a touch accompanied by faith. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because that woman had so much faith, faith that she knew if I could just touch the hems of his garment, Come on, I'm going to be all right. Yeah. I'm going to be made whole. Yeah. Jesus got the response from her he had wanted and anticipated. Uh -huh. She came before him and bowed at his feet and confessed everything to him. Yeah. This was a public acknowledgement of what had happened in her heart. She was different, and she wasn't ashamed to tell others about it. That's another thing we have to learn to do. When God does something in your life, don't keep it to yourself. Amen. Tell the world. 
Because you don't know whose soul or whose heart you're going to touch when you tell them. Amen. Amen. If I can help somebody, somebody. along the way, yeah. then my living shall not be in vain. Amen. And I'm going to tell everywhere, everybody, yeah. Yeah. everywhere I go about the goodness of God. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to tell it. Yeah. Yeah. You don't like it? You don't want to hear it? Then yeah. walk away. It's all right. But I'm still going to tell it. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus got the response from her that he wanted. When he acknowledged her testimony, Jesus spoke words for, to great comfort to her heart. His words confirmed what she already knew what had happened. Notice that he calls her daughter. This signifies the fact that they are in a different relationship now. You see, she got more than physical healing that day. Her faith brought her into a soul-saving relationship with Jesus Christ. The word whole is the same word translated saved. Throughout the New Testament, it means to be rescued from all harm and danger, to be kept safe and sound. Yes, she got a whole lot more than she bargained for that day. He tells her to go in peace. His words let her know that she has done the right thing by coming to him. Any other man in the crowd would have been offended and angered that this diseased woman intentionally touched him, but not Jesus. Mm -hmm. He was not afraid of ceremonial defilement. Mm -hmm. It could not touch him. All he knew was that a woman in trouble had exercised a grain of faith the size of a mustard seed. Amen. And he only cared for her healing. Yeah. This woman was a different person when she left Jesus. She wasn't ashamed to go around and tell everybody what Jesus had done for her. The same thing happened when Jesus touched and healed Peter's mother. See, in her condition, she, she represented those afflicted by the blight of sin. She was in a useless, hopeless condition mm -hmm. until she experienced the touch of Jesus. Mm -hmm. He touched her and cleansed her sin and transferred the sinner from a waste to life. Mm -hmm. He transformed the death. There was a man who could not communicate with anybody. Mm -hmm. He could not hear nor speak. But when Jesus touched him, yeah. all of that changed. Mm -hmm. He does not, he does the same for lost sinners as well. Those who saved by God are given the ability to hear him clearly and the privilege to speak to him openly. He transformed the darkness. Mm -hmm. Here's a man that's born blind at birth. Yeah. He is miraculously touched and healed by the touch of Lord Jesus. He can see. He opens the spiritual eyes when he touches our lives. Yeah. His children see things that they never thought they would see before. He transforms the doom. Jesus touched this leper and delivered him from a life that was doomed. Uh -huh. He was doomed to be ravaged by his disease and he was doomed to spend in life separated from other men and women. Yeah. Jesus changed all that. In his condition, the, he pictures the situation of every lost soul today. Separated from God now by a gulf of sin and doomed to an eternity in hell. The lost person also lives each day enjoying the Lord's blessing, but with no relationship with God at all. All the while, the wages of sin work themselves out in the life of that lost person. He transforms the dead. Jesus merely touched the hand of a dead girl, and she lived again. This is the power of his touch. There is nothing worse than death. It takes with it everything we have. 
In the spiritual realm, there is nothing worse than spiritual death. Mm. Yet it's the condition of every person who is lost and does not know Jesus. Mm -hmm. He also touched Lazarus. He didn't touch him like he touched the others, but he spoke his name. Yeah. Lazarus has been dead four days in his tomb. Yeah. He went and called his name. Yeah. Now, had he not called his name, everybody would have yeah, yeah. But he called his name. Yeah. And Lazarus was made whole again. All right. See, when we trust in Jesus yeah. and we do the right thing, Amen. he'll make it plain. Yes, Amen. I'm so glad, okay. so glad that I have Jesus in my heart. Yes, yes. All right. I'm not saying I'm perfect because I'm not. Yes, I don't dot every eye, I don't cross every T. But when I do, know that when I pray, uh -huh. I ask Jesus to be, to take care of all those sins that I have done that day. Yeah. Sinful thoughts yes. and sinful ways. Yeah. Uh -huh. When we do that, yeah. we're renewing our faith. No, 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 we no, become no, stronger. No, no, no. We have to realize that just touching him, just touching his garment. Yeah. yeah. See, that woman had powerful faith. Yeah. If she believed that, she, if she didn't have to really touch him, all she had to do was just touch his garment. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And she was going to be made whole. Yeah. 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 So, the children of God, I'm asking you this morning. Yeah. If you don't know him, <laughs> Get to know him. Get to know him. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. If you're Thank not you. satisfied in your life, Thank you, Lord. not satisfied in your soul, Thank you. get to know him. Amen. Thank you, he will make everything all right. Amen. Amen. We have to discover that they are now children of God. They discover that they are promised to a home in heaven. Yeah. They discover that they are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus. Uh -huh. They discover that the direction and desires of life have all changed. They discover that they are free from the power of sin to control oh, yeah. and dominate their lives. They discover that they are no longer God's enemy, but they have been reconciled to him. Uh -huh. They discover that all of this took place by grace through faith. Yeah. That it didn't cost them a dime. Amen. They discover that their battle with the wages of sin has however ended. They soon discover that they have been fully and finally forgiven of every sin and transgression. Our world is filled with people like this sick woman. They may have their physical affliction, but their real disease is a disease of the soul yeah. and of the heart. All they need for their healing is to get to Jesus. If you will come to him, yeah. he will heal the problems in your soul. Yeah. And he will give you a new life new to life. him. But I do know that the path of grace has brought you to a crossroads today. Yeah. I plead with you to do as this woman did. Let nothing yeah. hinder you yeah. from coming to Jesus. Amen. Amen. For your soul's salvation right now. Yeah. Can you testify today that you have felt the power of his touch? Yeah. First hand in your life? Yeah. I can. Amen. Yeah, do you know what he can do? Yeah. Or would you have to say, preacher? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I really like Jesus to touch yeah. me today. Yeah. Yeah. I need his powerful touch in my life right now. I don't know the kind of touch you need in your yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. But I know who can give it to you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Whether you are lost, backslidden, burdened, discouraged, or just want to learn love. From him, you need his touch. Come and get it. Amen. Amen.
thank you, Reverend Clark, for that <coughs> wonderful message. Because we certainly need the Lord yeah. in yes, our yeah. life. Yeah. Oh yeah, we can't do anything without the Lord. Yeah. Sometimes we we think we can and sometimes we wait and we go to everybody else and we do everything else rather than to come to Jesus. But as as he said, Jesus can fix it. Jesus can make it all right. Yeah. All you have to do is come to him. Uh -huh. So I invite you today, if you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, yeah. I invite you to come because he will, he will fix it. Yeah. Only he can fix yeah. it. Oh, you can go to the... Please, everybody stand.